Welcome to the Spice Room Reacts. We got a video from Patrick J. Sane. It's not going to be my video. The original will be down in the description below. So shout out to Patrick for making this video. And it's called The Horrible Crimes of Soccer's Biggest so so Psychopath. Hope, Hope Solo. Alright, let's react to it. Just one year before superstar goalkeeper Hope Solo was inducted into the National Soccer Hall of Fame, she Shocker. was caught by police officers passed out drunk in the driver's seat of a vehicle with her two-year-old children in the back. People were kind of concerned saying you guys were out here sleeping and wanted to make sure you were okay. Okay, what's going on? Why are you sleeping out here in the parking lot? Um, After refusing to comply with the officers and even threatening to falsely accuse one of inappropriately touching her, they got a warrant to draw her blood. Her blood alcohol level was 0.24, which is Jesus. over three times the legal limit. Now, alcoholism is a serious illness, and this seems like someone who clearly needs help. But Hope Solo has had countless slip-ups throughout her career that start to form a pattern of behavior rather than isolated incidents. Whether she was violently assaulting people, making obscene comments about other athletes and nations, or being caught under the influence of illegal substances, she is somehow always seen as the victim. This has led people to calling her a narcissist, sociopath, and that if she were a man, her reputation would be dragged through the mud. Today we are going to deep dive into the the chaotic world of Hope Solo, the most controversial woman in sports history. Solo's history of violence started in high school. In her senior year in 1998, Hope had a restraining order filed against her by another student. While at a fairground in Richland, Washington, Hope attacked the victim, punching her three times in the face. The victim spoke about the incident years later and said, she punched me in the cheek. Then she said, I effing hate you, you fat ass and punched me two more times, once in the eye and once in the mouth. The student immediately contacted the police and ultimately a judge awarded the victim a restraining order, requiring Hope to stay at least 300 feet from the student for what a year. Person. However, Solo romanticizes the incident in her book like she was the main character in an early 2000s oh, no. high school movie. My first serious boyfriend was a guy I'll call Tom. He was my first love, although I wasn't ready to sleep with him. I didn't hang out with the popular girls. I was too busy playing sports to play their social games. The popular girls saw me as a threat, and dating a guy like Tom made them hate me even more. After I got back from one trip, I heard that Tom had cheated on me with a cheerleader, one of the popular girls. She goes on to detail her run-in with the girl at the county fair. Hey, I said stepping in front of her, you're a effing sl Tom's pretty good, she said. You should give him a try. I punched her in the face. Solo then recalls herself fleeing the scene, shaking furiously angry. The fallout was huge. Her parents wanted to press charges. They wanted to know why I had punched their little darling. While we can agree this is typical high school drama that went too far, it's interesting how Hope romanticizes this in her book, which she wrote when she was 30 years old, like she was the hey, innocent yeah, target of the popular cheerleader, when in reality she was the one who started the violent attack. And we would not be bringing up this high school incident if it didn't foreshadow her future behavior as an adult. But before I continue to dive deeper um, into hey, Hope Solo's controversial career, have you heard that the flavored air category is quickly becoming the leading alternative to vaping and smoking? It's a whole new movement towards better habits. Led by the sponsor of today's video, Fume. Fume fills the void ditching a bad habit can leave. It's not a vape, there is no nicotine, and it has no batteries to charge. Flavored air isn't like vaping. If vapor was compared to sticky soda, fume cores are closer to herbal teas. There fume you go. has a lot of delicious flavors to choose from, like crisp mint and orange vanilla. With flavored air, you can satisfy your oral Flavid fixation air. through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, vapor, or combustion. Fume continuously invests in third-party studies to ensure the safety of their products, and they are backed by doctors in the US. The device feels really good in your hands and makes for a good fidget toy as well. I tried their crisp mint flavor, it's really nice and refreshing. Fume has served over 150,000 customers, and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use my code PATRICKCC to get 10% off a journey pack. Head to tryfume.com. That's tryfum.com, and use code PATRICKCC or scan the QR code on screen to save 10% off your order today. However, it is important to understand why Hope Solo got to her position as a Hall of Famer, because she is widely regarded as the best women's goalkeeper of all time. 
time. After an amazing high school career, she accepted a collegiate scholarship to the University of Washington. During her time at Washington, she would switch to the goalkeeper position. Solo instantly realized this was the position she was born to play, racking up a school record 325 saves and 18 clean sheets during her stint at UW. She even got to represent the United States national team in college, but didn't see much playing time. In 2003, Hope made her professional debut with the Philadelphia Charge, but shortly after that moved over to Sweden to play for the Swedish club Gothenburg. While in Europe, Hope was selected as an alternate for the US Olympic team in 2004, which is still a great honor. Then during the 2005 season, Hope became the starting goalie, a role she would fill for the next 11 years. The USA women's national soccer team has been a dominant force since the 90s. Whether it's the World Cup or the Olympic Games, they are always considered to be potential finalists. During Hope's run as the starting goalkeeper, the team saw a great success. In 2007, the USA placed third in the FIFA World Cup. In 2008, at the Olympic Games, they placed first, taking home the gold medal. In 2011, they played second in the World Cup, then took home another gold medal in the 2012 Olympic Games. And in 2015, they defeated Japan 5-2 and became World Cup champions. Damn. Hope Solo has 202 games as the USA goalie. Out of those 202 games, the USA only lost 11 of those games with her in the goal, and 102 of those games were shutouts. Some argue that she is the greatest American goalie of all time, yet despite her numerous accolades, her constant controversies and antics has put an irrefutable stain on her reputation. Hope Solo quickly became known as someone who is not afraid to speak their mind, and her teammates did not like it. In the 2007 World Cup semi-final game against Brazil, she was benched by head coach Greg Ryan in favor of Brianna Scurry. She details the night he made the decision. Solo says that Greg had a gut feeling that Brianna would be the better goalkeeper for the game. Hope confidently argued for her spot. Greg didn't seem to like my tone. I wasn't crying. I wasn't folding. I wasn't making it easy. Instead, I was fighting back with words and logic. So he tried to provoke me, just as he had on field all summer. I had nothing left to say, so I stood up to leave. Greg leaned over and pushed me back down on the couch. You effing leave when I say you can leave. Greg vehemently denies he ever put hands on Hope Solo. Hope even claims that she held herself back from throwing punches at her coach. But ultimately, she had to listen to his decision. She sat on the sideline angry and pouting during the whole game as they took a brutal 4 to nothing loss. After the game, Solo ignored the reporters as she walked back to the bus until the team's press officer, Aaron Heifetz, answered a question for her, which is his job. Agitated by a man speaking for her, she approached the press and said, Starting Scurry was the wrong decision, and I think anybody that knows anything about the game knows that. There's no doubt in my mind I would have made those saves, and the fact of the matter is, it's not 2004 anymore. Solo recalls the statement she made to the press officer, Don't ever tell me what interviews I can do. Her comments to the press were a clear insult to her teammate, and the statement sent shockwaves throughout the soccer world. They were appalled that she would throw her teammate under the bus like that. Although Hope claims she was not speaking ill of Brianna and was trying to criticize the coach's decision. Because of her comments, Greg Ryan dismissed Solo from the team. She wasn't allowed on the bench for the third place game, did not participate in the medal ceremony, and flew home from China on her own. Shortly after, Solo released a public apology. I would like to especially apologize to Greg Ryan and Brianna Scurry. There is no excuse for insulting a coach or a teammate. My focus now is solely on reconciliation with the team. However, Solo strongly strongly suggests in her memoir that this apology was not written by her, but rather to satisfy the press, which seems to be a common theme throughout the rest of her controversies. But the public took Hope's side. After all, she was objectively the better goalkeeper. Ryan made the biggest blunder in the history of women's soccer. Scurry is not as good as Solo, so why should Hope Solo have to apologize for telling the truth? A lot of people feel like Hope's punishment was unjustified. It's tough to tell if her teammates were clicking up on her because they felt insulted and jealous that the public took her side, or if Hope spun the narrative to make her seem like a victim when she was rightfully reprimanded. Either way, there was animosity. But then when they won the gold medal in the 2008 Summer Olympics one year later, this essentially proved to herself and the world that she could speak her mind and back it up. 
If people wanted to view me as a villain, I didn't care. I actually liked the edginess it brought to my game, the knowledge that they viewed me as a threat. Twitter was also a place where Solo liked to express her unfiltered thoughts about the world of soccer. Classic After Twitter. a 2010 loss to the Boston Breakers, she skipped autograph signing for the fans because she said that the Breakers fan section were shouting racial slurs and crude remarks at the players. The Breakers organization denied these allegations, but at the same time, Boston has a long-standing reputation for racist fans shouting at sports events. Events. A few weeks later, after the 1-0 loss to the Washington Freedom, she blatantly accused the refs of rigging the game so that Washington would win. It's official. The refs are straight bad. It's clear the league wanted DC in the playoffs, Solo tweeted. She was fined $2,500 by the WPS for her reckless statement. Soccer fans thought she oh, was damn. annoying and constantly trying to be the center of attention. I have a bad rap. You know, I, I, people look at me as selfish, outspoken. But I know who I am, and I know that my struggles in my life have allowed me to withhold judgment, and, and I'm proud of that. I think I've finally understood that I'm a groundbreaking female athlete, and yes. with that, it, it's, there's a lot of struggle with that. But I know that I'm doing wonderful things for the sport of soccer, and I know I'm doing amazing things for female athletes. So I can take it. You're a feisty, smart, beautiful lady who happens to be a fantastic goalkeeper. You're almost a perfect woman. Oh, I love you. So her 2011 <laughs> cover of ESPN's Body Issue, where she posted nude, just added more fuel to the fire. Body Issue is a yearly feature where pro athletes pose nude. During her cover story, she exposed what really goes on inside the Olympic Village. Hope said after the US women's soccer team won the gold in 2008, she had a night of partying with her teammates, including an all-night bender with actor Vince Vaughn. When we were done partying, we got out of our nice dresses, got back into our stadium coats, at which point she says they went on live television still drunk. She even said she snuck an unnamed celebrity back to her room in the Olympic Village, which was a major violation of the rules. Now it might not seem crazy that successful young people like to go out and party like the rest of us, but apparently these athletes like to party like Diddy. I've seen people having right out in the open, on the grass, between buildings. People are getting down and dirty. Her accusations are backed up by the unfathomable number of condoms the Olympics passes out each time it takes place. For example, about 450,000 condoms were distributed during the Rio de Janeiro Olympics, three times more than for the London Games. They put enough Diddy and Drizzy numbers at the freak offs. <laughs> However, it was in 2012 when Hope's life began to spiral a little bit. Her soon to be husband, Jeremy Stevens, who is the former tight end of the Seattle Seahawks, was arrested for a domestic altercation against Hope. Cops say Solo and Stevens were involved in an altercation around 3 45 a.m. on Monday. After arguing about where they will live after they get married, cops found Solo with a small amount of blood on her elbow, which apparently was enough evidence to arrest the husband. She said online the next day, I'm happy, I'm happily married. We never stand for domestic violence. I've never been hit in my life. It's unfortunate. And that's what the media can do. Ultimately, the charges were dropped, which makes you wonder where the misinformation came from. That does seem like a major thing to get wrong. Then again, domestic cases are extremely complicated. However, Hope would face the biggest controversy of her whole career just before the what World Cup qualifier games in 2014, where one of her <laughs> drunken nights turned into a brutal brutally violent assault against her sister and 17-year-old nephew. On June 20th, what? 2014, <clears throat> Teresa, Hope Solo's half-sister, received a phone call from Hope telling her she was upset because she had been fighting with her husband. Now, Hope and Teresa had been estranged for many years. They were not close by any means. When Teresa and her son got home around 10 p.m., they arrived to Hope parked in their driveway alone in the car. When they approached Hope's car, they noticed she was drinking out of a wine bottle. Her sister said she was swigging out of a bottle of wine that was in her cup holder. She right. was drunk. The family moved inside of the sister's house because Solo was not <clears throat> fit to drive. While inside, Hope and Teresa had some more wine and talked about her fight with Jeremy. Hope's 17-year-old nephew told the police that he endured a lot of verbal abuse from his aunt that night, but the situation got worse around 1 a.m. when Hope and her nephew argued. The teenager, who has been acting in local theater for years, told Solo at one point that being a good actor required having an athletic
athletic mindset. Solo responded that he was too fat, unathletic, and crazy to ever be an athlete. The teenager then told Solo she needed to get her cunt face out of the house and then walked away. Teresa also suggested Solo should leave because she insulted her son. But instead of leaving, Hope followed her nephew into the home's garage to confront him. The teenager then yelled for his mother Teresa, prompting Solo to call him a p and a mama's boy. Her nephew then replied with, you'll never know what it's like to be a mother because even if you did have children, they would have the most unhappy childhoods because you have no compassion. Damn. From there, he told police Solo lunged at him to take a swing, hitting him lightly in the face. Then after that, she charged at him and struck him multiple times. Teresa came into the room and said that her son briefly subdued Solo and she seemed to calm down. She told her son to let his aunt up off the ground. She's done. You can let go. She's done. But when he he let Solo go, he told police she immediately grabbed his hair, pulled his head down, and started punching him in the face repeatedly. He said, she jumped on top of me and started bashing my head into the cement. She grabbed him by the head again and she kept slamming him into the cement over and over again. So Teresa, defending her son, tried to pull Hope off. I came from behind her and I pulled her over and, you know, nah, to get her off my crazy. son. And then once she got off, she started punching me in the face over and over again. At this point, the son called the police. The police or an ambulance? A uh, police. Okay, let me get us to the police department. Hope Solo is going south. He's beating people up, and we need help. The nephew then grabbed a wooden broomstick and hit Solo over the head with it to defend his mother. She just turned around and looked at him and started to walk towards him, Teresa said of Solo's reaction. That's all. No flinch, no nothing. Her eyes just got big and she turned. Nothing. They had this suffered the wrath of a drunken Hope Solo and could not physically get her to stop assaulting them. Luckily, the police arrived to stop the violence. When the police began asking questions to piece together the story, Solo said her nephew struck her with a stick, then said he was a scared person and she was protecting herself. But when questioned why, she was unwilling to go into detail of exactly what happened. Solo was arrested and when she arrived at the Kirkland jail, an officer in his statement wrote, she showed signs of being intoxicated. Her eyes were bloodshot, speech was slurred, lack of good coordination, and the smell of intoxicants coming from her breath were present. As Hope was exiting the vehicle, she Wasn't told she the officer driving? that her necklace was worth more than what he made in a year. Oh As another God, officer was fingerprinted, Solo, she made numerous statements that I was not worth anything, and she should be proud to have such authority. Oh my After fingerprinting, God. she These was booked women, and she man. was being told to walk to the search area. Solo <laughs> pulled away from an officer, leading her to be taken to a holding cell. Officers took Solo to the ground to gain her compliance. It was at this point that Solo told one of the officers that if she weren't in handcuffs, I'd kick your ass. And you'll Bro, we, we just watched a, a, another woman just like this yesterday. But they belittle the cop. Like, it's just insane. And that's all that that's all they can do as well. Like, bro. Notice that her behavior towards the police officers is extremely similar to her DWI incident eight years later. It's important to know that all of the photos and all of the details regarding this incident that you now know were not initially released to the public. So nobody knew how violent this assault was. In the days following the assault, she released an apology to the world. I love my family dearly. We, like all families, have our challenges, but my sincere hope is that we are able to resolve this situation as a family. Fans showered her with love and support, thousands and thousands of comments proclaiming her innocence. Solo was what? not dropped from her Nike sponsor, nor was she suspended from professional soccer, even though countless male athletes were dropped after similar allegations. Many people believe the media was wow. extremely soft on her, but others say they were just waiting to see how the trial panned out to take any action. Hope was initially charged with two counts of fourth degree domestic violent assault, to which she pleaded not guilty on all charges. Eventually, the court dismissed the case after the judge claimed the victims were uncooperative, but the victims disagreed. They claimed they cooperated as much as possible, but because the charges were dropped to the public, Hope was innocent. Yet, less than a week after her charges were dropped, Hope found herself in another major alcohol-induced controversy. Hope Solo's husband was driving a U.S. soccer van when he was arrested for DUI at 1.30 a.m. on a Monday. Police said Solo was in the car at the time, but she was not arrested nor detained. Because of this incident, she was suspended from U.S. soccer for 30 days. Hope was interviewed on ABC News to discuss both of these major mistakes. This is her addressing the domestic assault. So I'm not, I'm not going to go into all of the details 
I was a victim of domestic violence at the hands of a, my 17-year-old nephew who is six foot nine, 280 pounds. Um, I was struck over the head and concussed right. pretty severely. It was a very scary night. Then she addressed the DUI. What in the world were you thinking? Well, clearly I wasn't thinking. It was horrible. It's like you weren't thinking choice. of the other one. I, like, I think bro. I just wasn't in a good place emotionally to, to even make good decisions. I mean, it's not an excuse, but I just, it was stupid and we should have called a taxi. I could only imagine hope that you must be on a roller coaster of emotions. That I'm, you just have I'm to... working through those emotions. You know, I was filled with anger and I'm finally able to sit down, talk to somebody about what I've been going through and the very traumatic events over the last year. And just being able to speak to somebody has been really beneficial for me. And of course, she hit everyone with the classic. I want people to realize I'm just human. I'm just human and I make mistakes and I want people to be able to forgive me if they're willing to do so. And after that, it was almost like it all never happened. Her fans forgave her, understood she's just human and were ready for her to get back out on the field. But the Washington State Court actually reversed the previous court decision to drop the charges and reopen the case against Solo. All of those graphic details and photos of her violent outburst were finally released to the public. But by then, the media had already moved moved on, and they didn't care to talk about it anymore. Hope and her legal team delayed the case for three years by appealing countless times. Basically, they delayed their trial and played the system until 2018 when the victims eventually just gave up and wanted to move on with their lives. Hope Solo officially beat another scandal. To make things better for her, right. the USA Women's National Team won the 2015 FIFA World Cup, which was a legendary feat. She was on top of the world, but the damage had been done, and real soccer fans and her teammates could see through the mask. And in 2016, at the Rio Olympic Games, she got herself in enough trouble that would formally end her career. During the Rio Olympic Games, Hope tweeted these two images of what looked like a doomsday supply of mosquito repellent, as well as her wearing a bug protective suit. She used the hashtag uh. proof. These tweets seem like jokes, but the repellent was her way of trying to protect herself from the Zika virus, which is spread by mosquitoes. And if you remember my Ryan Lochte video, then you know how Brazilians were not playing around with anyone who was claiming their country is not safe. The Zika virus wasn't a huge deal in the United States, but the state of Rio de Janeiro had recorded 26,000 suspected Zika cases. The virus has flu-like symptoms that most healthy people will be able to get through. It has been proven to cause a severe birth defect that results in babies born with abnormally small heads and underdeveloped brains. When addressing her tweets, Hope said that her and her husband were trying for a baby and she was worried it could possibly affect them. Them. I would never take the risk of having an unhealthy child. I don't know when that day will come for Jeremy and me, but I personally reserve the right to have a healthy baby. Nobody knows if this was true or if she was just trying to do damage control after her joke tweets failed to make people laugh. Whenever Hope was on the field during the games, people in the stands would regularly shout Zika whenever she touched the ball. <laughs> And also, we're not afraid to boo her. Many of Hope's fans felt that people were That's overreacting, so and protecting herself from mosquitoes is totally normal and understandable. Yet eight years later, people still comment on her Instagram, Zika, to make fun of her. Likely agitated by the boos from the Brazilian crowds, Hope expressed her frustration to the media again. This time, her comments would land her a suspension, and then send her into retirement. After the women's USA team lost to the Swedish national team in a penalty shootout, Hope Hope said, I'm very proud of this team, but I also think we played a bunch of cowards. The best team did not win today. I don't think they're going to make it far in the tournament. I think it was very cowardly but they won. Hope's comments reinforced to people that she was a sore loser. Calling another team cowards for out-strategizing your team in a sports competition is just silly. Plus, Sweden went on to play in the championship final, proving that they were pretty damn good. The media exploded with criticism for Hope. Ironically, this was her largest publicized controversy. With every major news article covering her rude comments and resurfacing her past domestic violence and DWI controversies, the pressure was at an all-time high 
and U.S. soccer had to do something. In a statement, U.S. soccer president Sunil Gulati said that the comments were unacceptable and do not meet the standard of conduct we require from our national team players, before slapping her with a six-month suspension. The U.S. soccer president said that this suspension does take yeah. into account her previous actions. However, it seems like U.S. soccer only suspended her because of the major media backlash and not because they actually felt she was wrong. And of course, Hope didn't think she did anything wrong either. Terminated contract. Not just a suspension. How can they do both? It's both. 17 f***ing years and it's over! She also wrote a formal statement saying that she was disappointed with the Federation's actions, but she did not apologize. Even her longtime teammate Abby Wambach was surprised it took this long for her to get suspended. But if we go back 10 years, if she's 10 years younger and she makes this comment, is she suspended by USA Soccer? Well, fired. I don't know because I think that the suspension was a, a lifetime achievement award, right? The, it, well, it was. I mean, in terms of her longevity oh. on the team and how many mistakes and stuff that she made, um, you know, and I'm not judging her because, listen, I've, I've made mistakes also. But it, for her, I think it was a compilation of all these things happening. So 10 years ago, I don't think she's made all those mistakes, right? And so I think that that, in the end, is why U.S. Soccer decided to suspend well, And during her suspension, Hope decided to do some press about the situation and further claimed that her comments were taken out of context. If anybody actually listened to the interview, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if you have, but it was a very, I wasn't enraged, I wasn't emotional, I wasn't angry. I just had this conversation with all of the journalists in the room. Ma'am, I think you were very emotional. And we were talking about the style of play. We weren't talking about you know, I didn't mean to come across... You're talking about the interview? interview? That the, the players retired? were cowards or the coach was a coward. I meant the style of play was not... It wasn't very Olympic spirited. She actually insinuated that the U.S. Soccer Federation suspended her for a different reason. There are more layers to it that I don't think everybody quite understands. Um, I believe the Federation used my comment saying the word coward to terminate me. Um, it was about more than... than well, uh, now, than, real quick. Do you think that Hope is going to tell them about her multiple controversies that involve alcohol, maybe her domestic violence case, or years of disrespectful tweets and off-color statements about the soccer industry? Of course not. Um, it was about more than, than, well, uh, than, than okay. that comment. Cause I, cause well, it, I've been fighting for, I'm sure you guys have all heard that I've been fighting for equal pay. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been the lead voice behind the push for equal pay. Um, in fact, in all the court documents, it says Hope Solo versus United States okay. Soccer Federation. Yeah. Hope heavily insinuates that she was terminated not because of her own words and actions, but rather her involvement in trying to get female soccer players equal pay as the male players. Not only do we bring in more money for the Federation than the men's team, yeah. but it's federal law. It's the Equal Pay Act. You have the same employer doing the same job, putting in the same amount of time. Granted, we're more successful at it than our men's team. <laughs> Now, the gender pay gap is a deeply discussed issue across all industries that includes so many detailed nuances and laws to consider that trying to explain just the U.S. soccer pay situation requires an entire video of its own. But generally speaking, yes, women's soccer players did get paid less while generating about the same amount of money in the years 2016, 2017, and 2018. Okay. And yes, Hope Solo led the charge speaking up for women's soccer and trying to get them equal pay. But now that she embarrassed her yeah, team with her that. comments and got suspended, Suspended, she was all alone. She filed a complaint in 2016 with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that alleged wage discrimination by the Soccer Federation. Unfortunately, you are the person that are, that is getting this knife, you know, through you. But at the same time, it's going to open up so much, and you are that Martin Luther King of <laughs> women's soccer. <laughs> Martin Luther King of soccer is crazy, but now Hope's life mission <laughs> was entirely different. She retired from the game and was now fully dedicated to her activism. In 2018, she sued the U.S. Soccer Federation, accusing the governing body of neglecting youth soccer development for the sake of self-serving financial gain. So, soccer in America right now is a rich white kid's sport. And then we have to ask ourselves, well, no wonder why we are not qualifying for the World Cup 
when we have alienated a huge population of really talented youth soccer players. Then a few days later, she even tried to run for president of the company she was suing. But what's interesting is that in 2019, 28 women's national team players sued the US Soccer Federation without consulting Hope Solo first. Hope had been discussing this issue for years now, and they came together to sue the USSF for the same exact reasons that Hope did. So it makes you question why didn't they come to her or include her? And in light of this new lawsuit filed by the 28 players, the USSF has sought dismissal of Solo's lawsuit. Hope tried to get the government to consolidate their lawsuits together so they could just settle one case and she could be included with the team. Without her present, Solo warned, the players might back down and surrender. But the US women's national team did not want Hope Solo involved. This is extremely telling what her previous colleagues think of her. Perhaps all those years of dealing with her controversies, they figured it would be impossible mm. to get her to remain calm and calculated while facing this litigation. They probably figured she would mess it up somehow. But in 2022, the US women's national team made a $24 million settlement with the USSF and agreed to formulate a new contract between the Federation and the players. This was a groundbreaking advancement into the future of the game, but Hope Solo disagreed. This settlement is not a huge win. It's heartbreaking and infuriating. A promise right. of equal pay from the Federation and back pay for a select group of players isn't equal pay, and it's not what this fight was about. Hope was defeated. She felt that everything she had worked so hard for was stolen from her and settled for pennies. She was now fighting her lawsuit alone, and one month after the 28 women settled, she was found passed out drunk in a Walmart parking lot with the engine running and her two-year-old twins in the back seat. As police approached what? the vehicle, they noticed the car was on and running. When they knocked, Hope was jolted awake from being passed out behind the wheel. As soon as the officer started talking to Solo, he noticed the smell of alcohol on her breath and asked her multiple times, how much have you had to drink tonight? Every time she was asked, she denied drinking at all. The officers patiently tried to get her to present her ID for five minutes while she ignored them, scrolled her phone, and even called her husband. As Solo sees the situation is escalating, she finally hands over her ID, but still refuses to comply with the officers. Step out of the car so I can so I can make sure you are sober and able to be a competent adult in front of these kids. I am a competent adult. Okay, then step out of the car. Can you tell me why? Because you smell like alcohol. That's right. And you're passed out driving. in the car with the car on. So step out of the vehicle. The I'm not asking you again. I would like to call my attorney. Step out of the car. Hope refused all roadside alcohol tests, so the officers got a warrant to draw her blood and arrested her on suspicion of DUI. The test showed her alcohol level was 0.24, uh, which is three times the legal limit, and she also uh. tested positive for THC. As the officer guides her to her car by grabbing her bicep, this, she man. threatens to file a false claim. I don't need you to okay. touch me. All right, let's go. I can walk by okay. myself. Well, I'll make sure that you oh my God, you don't need to touch me. All right, that's fine. All right, that's cool. Because I will have a complaint that you touch me inappropriately. Do not touch me. Then she continued to berate the officers the entire time she was detained. I'm so sorry you had nothing else to do tonight. So. I hope I was very entertaining for you because I know I was. I know that I blessed you with my presence. Mm -hmm. Oh my Hope God! Was charged man. of driving while intoxicated These and pled guilty. The 40-year-old was sentenced shit. to 30 days in jail, a 24-month license suspension, as well as a $2,500 fine. That's but all she received she gets. a 30-day jail credit for submitting herself to an inpatient rehab center. She acknowledged oh, okay. her mistake on Instagram and recognized that alcohol was a destructive part of her life. She said, "I continue to be a student of the greatest school called life, and I will continue to learn and grow from these experiences. I will continue to gain." empathy, knowledge, and stories to share. I consider this a gift to pass it on to others because pain shared is pain lessened. People were angry that she did not apologize, but rather used this as a way to again boost herself up some more. She even spoke about the situation on her podcast where she claims this incident came from postpartum depression. Speaking to my counselor while in treatment and after studying my own behavior and habits and struggles throughout the pandemic, I learned about the varying levels of postpartum depression. I also came to realize 
that I completely lost touch with myself and even with my marriage. I put myself last. Sure, I needed some help, but I also knew that I didn't need it to survive. It's hard to admit when we're wrong. And truthfully, no matter how much you apologize or how you apologize, you will still have angry people in your comments and people saying it's not good enough. But celebrities often go into deep psychological detail about their lives as soon as major controversies come up. They go on exactly. podcasts and talk about them being just human and not perfect, hoping to gain empathy from their supporters. Yeah, that's and all over the is. years, they seem less genuine and more like repetitive PR out. statements. Hope Solo was inducted into the soccer Hall of Fame after this DWI incident. And yes, she deserves to be considered a soccer legend because she is one. But I think it's pretty clear the media has been soft on her over the years. Why? I'm not sure. Is she a narcissist with dangerously erratic behavior who is unable to admit when she's wrong? Or is she just a boisterous girl boss whose controversies are simply misunderstandings? Well, that is up for you to decide. My god. What a what an interesting video, man. Yeah, shout out to uh, Patrick for that video. That was very interesting. Manny makes some good videos.